Welcome to the second episode of Kaleidoscope Beat. The show is hosted by Friends of Vietnam Heritage, FBH for short, the leading culture and heritage society based in Hanoi for more than 20 years. In each episode of Kaleidoscope Beat, we explore the colorful personality of Hanoi and Vietnam, diving into this nation's rich and vast culture. Heritage and tradition. On this episode, we will get to know about one of Vietnam's special festival, Phu Lam, with Dr. Chan Doan Lam. The first of all the Buddhist stories originated from teaching our Buddhist speech. The second. It is the day yet people express their faith and quality. And lost into the world of Vietnamese greatest poet, Nguyễn Du. Tiếng tháng bảy mưa dầm rùi rụt, tóc tôi may lạnh mút sương khô, lá mùa thu mùa chiều thu. Bu Lan, or Chung Nguyen Festival, is a Buddhist festival that emerged long ago in Vietnam. Every year, the festival takes place on the 15th day of the seventh lunar month, celebrating the seventh full moon in a year. In Vietnamese, it is so called Sa Tội Vong Nhân because this is a day. For the wandering souls, Vietnamese as well as people in many other countries sharing the same festival. This is a day when the gates of hell open, and thus souls of the dead can return to their homes and gather with their families. Vietnamese people consider this to be an occasion. When families can gather, as well as the chance to express love and gratitude to ancestors and parents, this is the reason Bu Lan is also known as Mother's Day in Vietnam. On this day's morning, a lavish tray full of delicious dishes and votive offerings is set on the ancestral altar. The household will burn incense. And invite ancestors to come back home and celebrate the festivals with the family. Following this, all family members will gather and enjoy the communal, mainly vegetarian lunch. Pagodas are crowded during the festival day as Buddhist followers gather to hear the monks' lectures. The monks will explain about the responsibility of children to their parents, as well as pray for parents whenever they are living or dead. Each Buddhist holds a flower, usually a rose, in front of their chest, red if their parents are living, and white if their parents have passed away. In the evening. A tray full of food is set in front of the house. The householder will light incense, pray for homeless souls, and wish that they can rest in peace. This shows the humanitarianism spirit of Vietnamese people. At night, for those who live by the riverside, a ceremony is held to release lanterns floating on the river. Following the river stream, carrying the wishes of the living, Vietnamese people believe that by doing this, their wishes for their parents will come true. The ceremony invites wonderful scenery, in which the river is sparkling, and the ambience is so holy. In today's episode, our friends Charles and Stella, together with Dr. Chen Wenlong, 
will help us have a deeper understanding about Bulan Festival. Music first. Today we will enjoy the song "Chen Ding Fu Wen," written by Phó Đức Phương, with the performance of Vietnamese diva Mỹ Linh. The song is a mix between pop music and traditional Kachu music. With haunting melody and surreal lyric, the song has lived in the heart of Vietnamese people for many years. Một 
đời khác nữ khao rút lòng nhà kén sâu ta muốn hỏi một câu Was the song Trên đỉnh Phù Vân Good afternoon. We all know that Tet is the biggest and most important festival and holiday period in the annual Vietnamese calendar. And the Vietnamese people will of course know about the country's second largest festival, But this may not be so familiar to foreigners living in Hanoi. Wandering Souls Day shares remarkable similarities and significance with its Christian counterpart known simply as All Souls Day. Vietnam celebrates Wandering Souls Day on the 15th day of the seventh lunar month. This year in 2021, it actually fell on August 22nd, last month because the date of this festival, like Tet, is dictated by the moon cycle. My name is Charles Dvorak, and I am joined by Stella Chiara, and today we meet one of the most educated and well-read persons I've ever met, who also happens to be one of our favorite and most modest and humble men in his field, Dr. Phan Duan Lam. He is a scholar and researcher, and also a leading member of the Tin Lang Viet, cultural group which promotes Vietnamese heritage and culture through their love of the village communal house. Dr. Lum is knowledgeable on a huge range of topics and today Stella and I explore the tradition and relevance of Wandering Souls Day. Welcome Dr. Lum. Oh, well, uh, thank you for your connection. So uh, what would you like me to talk about? I think a great place for us to start would be what is the overall meaning and feeling of today's expression in Vietnam of Wandering Souls Day. Actually, because I see that you have been for a long time, you know that how much significance this holiday had for the Vietnamese people because it is their impact the combination of three holidays in, in one. The first, the holiday of monthly souls originated from teaching of Buddhist preacher. The second, it is the day when Vietnamese people express their freedom of quality towards their parents and actors. And the third, it is the, the day when the Vietnamese people are also expressed They are compassion towards wandering souls that mean the souls of the people who are believed to have no support. Dr. Lam, is this wandering souls they celebrated in the same way throughout all of Vietnam, or is it a little bit different in each area of the country? Well, because I think that it is the holiday celebrated most of by the people, the Viet people. You know that Vietnam is a multi ethnic country, and uh, uh, there are 54 ethnic groups in Vietnam. But the Viet people are the majority of the core of the total population celebrated in their holiday. Maybe other ethnic groups have similar holidays, but not the same. How about uh, the West? In the West. Mm -hmm. We celebrate on the same date every year. Um, it is in something called All Hallowed Time. Um, it begins with, on October 31st with the very well-known holiday called Halloween. 
Halloween was originally a pagan festival. It was a time in which children dressed up in costumes and went around their neighborhood in America today and in Europe today. Uh, they go around their neighborhood and they collect candy and treats from their neighbors. And so in this way, it's more of a secular holiday. The Catholic Church many centuries ago wanted to direct the non-Christians into Christianity. Uh, conversion is a major factor of the Christian religion, conversion to their religion. And what they did was they attached two holidays immediately two days after Halloween. The first is on November 1st, and that is called All Saints Day. And they celebrate the legacy of all the saints of the Catholic Church. In the next day, the following day, is called All Souls Day, where the Catholic Church honors in a more sedate format, in a way more of a religious celebration, at the church where they honor all the deceased people, family members, church members, priests, bishops, and others. And so the Catholic Church combined their Christian holidays with the pagan holiday of Halloween. And today, nobody really knows that anymore. They just celebrate all three days in a row. So is it more secular or religious holiday today? All Souls Day is very religious. I was raised Christian, and when I attended All Souls celebrations on November 2nd, I had to attend because I played the organ in the church and I had to go and play the music for the mass and sing the hymns. And so I, I got to see a close up of it and it was a much smaller gathering than All Saints Day, which is the previous day, and also together All Saints and All Souls Day, I would say for the past hundred years has been a much smaller gathering together than Halloween, which is very happy and popular uh, night out for children. Actually, in Vietnam, the uh, one week stone day is uh, interpreted as the day or the time of the year or when uh, people, prisoners in hell, is the death people who have made a uh, very bad some certain differences from the Christian celebration of the death of members of its culture, members of its community. I think the difference is that the Vietnamese can be released from purgatory. The Christian tradition says that purgatory is the place a person goes when all people go when they die and they are then determined whether they will go to heaven or hell permanently.
In accordance with modern Buddhism belief, when meditating, a bhadhat disciplined named Mukkin Lien, thanks to his divine eyes, saw that his mother has been reborn as a hungry spirit because of her evil act in her previous life. He wanted to save her, but he could not do it by himself. The Buddha told him that only the combined effort of all Buddhist monks could soothe the sufferings of the tormented. He ordered Mukkin Lien to organize an assembly of monks to make offerings for his decreased mother. From this assembly, many Buddhist countries developed their own customs of offering food, clothing, and other items to hungry spirits in the seventh lunar month. When the realms of heaven, hell, and the living are open. But here in the Islamic uh, culture, we should make different, distinguish the difference between the two concepts of hell. The concept of hell is false concept. Under the influence of Stalin and false religion, is different from the hell in Buddhist conception. Actually, the original I and mean, primitive Buddhist religion develop the concept of hell, and according to their method or their teaching, hell is escape. the state of psychology of mind when you feel not at peace with your mind, which is a hell. When you feel happy, joy in your mind, in psychology, it is the nirvana or paradise. In the folk culture, hell is materialized into a prison. We can see, we can send the prison, we can send the prisoner, and we can send the kings of the prison, of the manager of the prison, right? It's pretty important. Yes. So, uh, maybe there is different between the, I mean, the three concepts of hell. The concept of hell is Buddhist teaching. The concept of hell in the Vietnamese pop culture and the concept of hell in uh, Christian tradition. Is it right? Yes, I, I think you are exactly on the mark. So, uh, during the uh, old social holiday in Vietnam, all Vietnamese families would have a banquet. They offer food, healthy food, to, uh, they invite a series of their ancestors and only souls to go to their home, enjoy the food, offer food, and at the same time, they also burn paper, furniture, and paper clothes as the um, provision for the laundry soul. And they, it's their uh, one component, very essential, a mark. Uh, among the different foods is the uh, rice food. So when I was very small, uh, I was led to a uh, guided to the Buddhist temple and taken by my grandma to the uh, Buddhist temple. And I saw how Buddhist followers made a tiny bowl from a banyan leaf and then they pour rice food into such tiny bowls and place them at the wood temple gate or at the entrance of, to their home and to invite one itself to enjoy. So do you offer any public offering or uh, uh, to souls on the uh, postal day in the West? Sorry. Yes and no. The Christian attitude towards the All Souls Day is mostly not to have a spiritual contact the way the Vietnamese culture does, where they are bringing food and having little ceremonies to attract the souls of these people, of their loved ones who have passed, 
The Christian is, seems more to me to be a celebration in the church with a ceremony, with a traditional Christian mass, praying for the soul. And I'm going to God, the Christian God, and praying to God to either release the souls who are trapped in purgatory or to simply bless the people who have passed on into the afterlife and are now hopefully in heaven. So, uh, who is to advocate that? You know, the soul, people who are uh, either kept in the hell or who are living in the heaven or who have the chance to be reincarnated. The driving force is the karma. Karma is the result of the own actions you have accumulated. Giving your life. So, who is to say that? Who is called to perfect themselves, to do only good actions, to have good karma, which allow to push them up to death into the way of reincarnation? And in the context of the dead emperor may punish or reward people according to their actions. So with the karma, on the whole in Vietnam, people I suppose are happy. Are they on the whole happy when it's the one who is going to lose? Yeah, because the one who is going to lose a good spirit and bad spirit. Difficult to distinguish between good spirit and evil spirit. Yes, uh, the one who is going to do people feel that pressure? Yes, yes. For example, rice Normal rice for humans can be kept for for this. Yes. But the rice offering to what you sell, if they have been offering on mm. the, the ritual, they don't spoil very, very quickly. Really? Oh, I see. Okay. And if it doesn't go spoiled, could you yeah. say that the one being told has not happened? I know, because there are other factors, not only right here. But the one being told will always come back. So if it has come back at any time, and in the special occasion, or in different places, that's the invitation, or by their offering, defense, or random travel, some of them. Have already been Kaleidoscope View. Hi, I'm Stella, the Vice Chair of Friends of Vietnam Heritage, or FBH for short. For those of you who are not familiar with what we do, we were founded in 1999, over 20 years ago, and since day one, we've been telling the story of Vietnam's culture and heritage to anyone and everyone who loves this country. As far as we know, FBH, based in Hanoi, is unique in Vietnam. We are the only organisation to bring all cultural activities together under one roof. So how do we do this? We run many activities, including around 25 Hanoi City Walks in English, Japanese and Spanish, exploring the city through the eyes of the locals, wandering down hidden alleys and revealing the stories behind the buildings. Leading academics and professors share their knowledge in small group discussions, giving us a chance to dig down deep into a topic. Our excursions go off the beaten track as we discover artisans and villagers eager to tell their stories while our book club reviews Vietnamese literature and authors. These highlight just a few of our many, many activities. And if you would like to find out more about us, please email us at hello at fbheritage.org and our website is www.fbheritage.org. to the overall tradition of wandering souls and the concept of Vu Lan, much of which have been referred to by Dr Lum. 
One tradition is also the recognition of Mother's Day and a child's love for their mother. While there is an abundance of references in terms of legends, stories, music, literature and poetry, one of the most poignant and expressive references is a rose for your pocket, an appreciation of motherhood by Zen master Thich Nhat Hanh. He talks about the important role played by one's parents in our lives, especially our mothers. To quote from the Thich Nhat Hanh Foundation, our parents play an important role in our lives, whether they are still alive or have passed away, whether we have a good relationship with them, difficult relationship with them, or no relationship at all. Strengthening our relationship with the people who gave us life can be a nourishing and healing practice. In order to help us cultivate our understanding, love and gratitude for our mothers, our teacher Thich Nhat Hanh wrote, A Rose for Your Pocket. We swim in a world of tender love for many years, and without even knowing it, we are quite happy there. Only after it is too late do we become aware of it. People in the countryside do not understand the complicated language of city people. When people from the city say that mother is a treasure of love, that is already too complex for them. Country people in Vietnam compare their mothers to the finest varieties of bananas, or to honey, sweet rice, or sugarcane. They express their love in these simple and direct ways. For me, a mother is like a ba hương banana of highest quality, like the best nếp mụt sweet rice, the most delicious meal lau sugarcane. In life, it is often necessary to make difficult choices. We cannot catch two fish at the same time on an each hand. It is difficult because if we accept growing up, we must accept suffering. I don't regret leaving my mother to become a monk, but I'm sorry I had to make such a choice. I didn't have the chance to profit fully from this precious treasure. Each night, I pray for my mother, but it is no longer possible for me to savor the excellent Ba Hương banana the best quality nip mood treat rice and the delicious meal lao sugarcane. Please don't think that I'm suggesting that you not follow your career and remain at home at your mother's side. I have already said I do not want to give advice or lessons in continuing to look into her eyes with a serene smile. Tell her, do you know that I love you? Ask her this question without waiting for an answer. Even if you are 30, 40 years old or older, ask her simply because you are the child of your mother. Your mother and you will both be happy, conscious of living in eternal love. And tomorrow, when she leaves you, you will not have any regrets. This is the refrain I give you to sing today. Brothers and sisters, please chant it, please sing it, so that you won't live in indifference or forgetfulness. This red rose, I have already placed it in your lapel. Please be happy. Returning to the conversation with Dr. Chen Duan Lam, let's listen to the song about the internal love of a mother. Mẹ yêu con, written by Nguyễn Văn Tý, performed by Thu Hiền. 
The song is the lullaby during the war time, where the mother sends her love and dreams about peace to her child.
So in the Christian tradition, I found on wonderful purgatory called the internet, five steps that are important to Christian All Souls Day. First is that they remember all the faithful departed. Number two, the Christian mass is offered, as mentioned earlier. The soul goes to purgatory, which is a place of purification. And then after they go to purgatory, then they are either sent to heaven, or they say, you are beyond help, you're going to hell. But there's no return. There is no reincarnation. The fourth step is the whole ceremony is a reminder that the living will someday die. We are reminded that as people who can celebrate people who have passed, that we too will someday pass ourselves. And this is symbolized by the lowering into the ground. That's a very big important part of the death of a Christian is that they are buried in the ground. And finally, the fifth step of All Souls Day is that it is a Christian tradition to visit a cemetery. And indulgences are granted in behalf of the person who has died if you pray at the cemetery. So the concept of indulgences is a very traditional Christian style of participation where the people who are living can pray, and the more they pray, the more indulgences is they get to release their departed family members from purgatory to heaven. Here, a still, here the one soul day when people may press little acts of freedom either to their parents. They may offer their parents uh, good food. They may say words of compassion to their parents. I'm kind of curious as to, it seems to me that there's an equal weight given between praying and seeking indulgences and praying for the souls. And in the West, when a person is approaching death, and of course it's with elderly people or people who have severe illness, there is a Christian tradition called the Last Rites, where a priest is summoned and he performs an anointment of the person who is dying. Now, I recall there was a tradition that said that if you did not receive the last rites, you would spend more time in purgatory. You would require more indulgences. I think what happened, I could be wrong on this, I think after World War II, when so many soldiers were dying on the battlefields, that this tradition sort of tended to just fade away. It also has to do with the Catholic Church has trouble attracting priests now to administer the rites because, because fewer and fewer people want to become a priest in the Catholic Church. And uh, actually the same thing happened to the Vietnamese culture, the Vietnamese society. And now the Buddhist Buddhist and holiday one on the soul that will become more popular. I was uh, no idea that it be a holiday for the high people uh, in the country. Here in Vietnam, we have several weekly work in the uh, on this topic of what we so. For example, in the 15th century, King Le Hai So, which is a very famous person in Vietnamese history, who this very much towards the Vietnamese culture. Is believed to have written an oration to the ten tribes of one big spirit. And then uh, in the 19th, 18th, and 19th century, another very famous poet in Vietnamese literature, you may know, is Lu, the author of Hell of Hell, also wrote in an oration to the wandering spirit. And this oration has been viewed by people as uh, one of the essential sutras to be chanted during the ceremony. Because it is the excellent, they are excellent weekly work. But the oration to one being spirit by King Richard of the 15th century, because it is written in the classic tradition 
So it's not very popular. It's popular with the you know, history, either along the men the method, but not the common people. But the oration to what we did it by the nineteenth century has been become very, very famous because it's written by the known script, the Vietnamese script. So how about the literature about this topic? Well, culture in the West tends towards secular. There is not a lot of culture about religious themes. The American culture prior to World War II was basically all Eurocentric. It was all taken from European traditions, German, Italian, and those came over in the forms of serious music. Uh, opera was the big medium in the, in the 19th century. And of course, it was always said that you needed three elements for a successful opera. You needed sex, money, and death. And so you needed some romance, you needed some rival, you needed the two rivals, one of them will survive and win the woman's heart, and the other will die in a duel or a battle some other uh, various means, and of course, money is always involved in every uh, great story. They say that's true of literature, too. I think in the West, literature is not so geared towards spiritual and religious themes as it is in Asia. And I prefer the Asian stories. Asia seems to lean towards spirituality, meditation, pure relationships, uh, true love, as opposed to the West, where realism really became an entire movement in the early 20th century, where operas, for instance, depicted the seedier sides of life. The people were struggling for living, drinking, womanizing, in a misogynist society. And in that respect, I think there are very big differences in the cultures of the West and East. Dr. Lum made reference about literary works relating to wandering souls, including Nguyen Zhu, the great Vietnamese poet, who gave amazing insight into Vietnamese society of the late 18th and early 19th centuries. Nguyen Zhu is of course most famous for his epic poem The Tale of Kyu, but among his other literary works he also wrote the poem Call to Wandering Souls. Hugh Ngoc, one of Vietnam's modern-day cultural writers and academics featured this poem in his book Sketches for a Portrait of Vietnamese Culture. According to ancient Vietnamese beliefs, the souls of those having suffered a tragic death and of those having died without leaving children to worship their memory were condemned to lead a wandering life in the world of shadows. The ceremony for their salvation is held every year on the 15th day of the 7th lunar month. Nguyen Zhu's Call to Wandering Souls is a Van Thi funeral oration written for such an occasion by its pathos, its profound humanism and the thoughts it contains on the vanity of this world. It is to some extent akin to two famous pieces of English literature Although inspired by a totally different conception of the word, the visit by Hamlet and Horatio to the cemetery at Elsinore by Shakespeare, and the elegy written in a country churchyard by Thomas Gray. Đường Bạch Dương bóng chiều mát mát, 
họ đường ngay lắc đắc xuống xa lòng nào là chẳng thiết tha cõi dương còn thế nữa là cõi âm trong truyền giả có khôn thiêm phản phất u minh thương thay thập loại chúng sinh hồn đơ phách chiếc lên đây quê người As always in the seventh moon, rain falls like senseless weeping. Cold wind bites into the bare bones. There is no sadness like the sadness of the autumn dusk, where the rushes wither endlessly, and one by one fall to earth the yellow, flattened leaves. Leaves of the poplar linger, delaying the day of parting. Pear trees scatter the tears like dew, the dew like tears. What human heart would not for pity sigh for the sad aspect of a world of light? How much deeper than is the sorrow of the world of shades, united and all held fast in that dark embrace by flickering ghost glow that the ways be known. Pity them, the souls of those lost thousands, when wandering they go forth to unknown shores. Here in Vietnam, one of those days has a weekly net, it's called Bulan. This one, etymology, I mean, some of the original word is taken from the Sanskrit word, which means the uh, form of is the punishment. It means the punishment applied treatment to hell when people are uh, hung upside down from selling of uh, the cell of the head of hell. So, uh, on this day, on the day of one stone, uh, the uh, The prisoners, which are punished by being hung upside down, are released from this kind of punishment, kind of torture. But in the popular language, it's called a one day. Thus, the Christian also say have another or other designation or denomination or name. If that the one who told the story told say, is that a specific genre of music that plays? So is that a specific genre of music that is played by or by musicians? No, 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 no. Only a question. We are used to all of the keyboard to be chanting the broad scale music to prepare you before the ritual. And the second is to awaken. The prisoner can be held, and the third is to keep the beat of the candle. That's wonderful because being a musician, I have been fallen in love with Vietnamese music. It is so different than anything I've heard before. What I have noticed is that I lived on Yen Phu Village during my first visit to Vietnam three years ago, and because I didn't know when the holidays were, suddenly Adam would be walking home one night and the entire temple would be lit up and there would be dancing and wonderfully graceful, just gentle music and dancing of the people. Now, obviously, they have to prepare this. These are, these were very organized. They all had the same clothes. They all had costumes to a certain degree. There was a leader, a lead singer who carried the main message and then people behind her who were also accenting what she was singing about. And we don't have those kind of dramas, particularly in the West. Uh, in the region of Buddhism, it didn't have any music. And the Buddhist music differs from country to country, from region to region. 
For example, if we compare three ways of Sutra uh, chanting for the same ceremony in the Paibon, in the Hanuman uh, or Hanoi, we will see very, very much, very big difference. So, during the observation of the 1000th anniversary of Hanuman Hanoi, more than 10 years ago, I attended actually, uh, the ceremony held by the Buddhist monks from three respective regions of the uh, Hanoi, Hawe, and Bukini City. So it, I saw it very clearly that the uh, this has different ways of counting sutras and of praying. Very interesting, very interesting Buddhist music. to the end of today's show. We hope you have more understanding about Vietnamese wandering so day and perhaps you may realize some similarities or differences with your culture as well. We will be back with another program on a different cultural theme. Thanks again for listening and see you again soon. Tạm biệt và hẹn gặp lại các bạn.